Hi, welcome to your section 9.1 notes. Today we're going to be getting into the square root property and completing the square. Um, so the goal for the end of chapter 9 is we should be able to solve quadratic equations of all different forms using all different methods. So today the two methods we're going to be focusing on is the square root property and then completing the square because they kind of go hand in hand. So your square root property says if x and k are complex numbers and x squared is equal to k, then x is going to be equal to the square root of k and x is going to be equal to the negative of square root of k. Um, because if I were to plug in, uh, let's say something like if we had x squared is equal to 4, well 2 squared is equal to 4, but so is negative 2 squared is equal to 4, right? So it's both the positive and the negatives um, that result in your solutions. Okay, so if we had this as our first example, something very simple, x squared is equal to 5. Well, to undo a square, we take the square root of both sides. So taking the square root of the left leaves us with x, right? Because last, um, last chapter we were solving radical equations by doing the inverse of a square root, which is squaring it. So now the inverse of squaring it would be to take the square root. The square root of five does not simplify nicely, so we're just gonna leave it as the square root of five. But then I do need to remember that it's both gonna be positive and negative. And then to make our answers fancy and put it into set notation, it's the set of negative square root five and positive square root five. Please, please, please put your answer in set notation. All right, so that was a pretty simple one. Let's add a few steps to the mix. Here we want to isolate the x squared. So in order to do that, we're going to add the 48 over, and then we're going to divide out the 4, which gets us x squared is equal to 12. So now to undo my square, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. I'm going to remember that plus or minus square root of 12. So now I have to ask myself, can I simplify the square root of 12? Well, yes, I can. That's 4 and 3. So that would go to positive and negative two square roots of three. So to make our answer fancy, smallest goes first, so negative two root three, and then positive two root three would be your two solutions. Now we have a quantity being squared. So we have two x minus three squared is equal to 18. Well, I still have my square already isolated. Like there's nothing in front, there's nothing behind that set of parentheses. So I can just kind of treat this the same way I was in the past problems, where I can undo that square, this square right here, by taking the square root of it. And what I do to one side, I must do to the next. So when I square root that square, I'm left with two X minus three is equal to plus or minus the square root of 18. Let's go ahead and simplify that. So that would be what, nine times two. So three square roots of two plus or minus is equal to two X minus three. Do not, do not, do not forget that plus and minus sign. Now I need to solve this equation for X. In order to do that, I'm gonna add my three over and it's just kind of best practice to put that whole number in front of the rational number or the irrational number, sorry. So three plus or minus three root two. And then we're going to divide by 2. And just to keep things kind of simple, I'm going to separate that into two different fractions. So I get x is equal to 3 halves plus or minus 3 root 2 over 2. Well, I can't simplify any of those numbers. Remember, if you guys remember when to simplify and ignore that radical, can I divide anything out of 3 and 2? No, I can't. So I can't simplify that further. So now writing it in set notation, do the subtraction first. So 3 halves minus three square root two over two, and three halves plus three square roots of two over two will be your final answer. Okay, so if you want to try these on your own, go ahead and pause. Welcome back. Hopefully, if you did pause and you tried these. So for this first one, three X squared is equal to 54 x squared is equal to 3 goes into 5, 1, so that's 18. So we should have gotten plus or minus 9 and 2, so 3 square roots of 2. So you would write it out as negative 3 square root 2, positive, oops, 3 square roots of 2. 
Over here, you can square right, by, right away. So 3x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. Subtracting your 1 gets you negative 1. Always put it in front of the plus or minus. Plus or minus square root 2. Divide everything by 3. So we get x is equal to negative 1 third. Can't simplify that. Root 2 over 3. Can't simplify that. Write it in set notation. Do the subtraction first. So negative 1 third minus 2 square roots of 3 negative one-third plus two square roots of three. Put it in set notation. Okay, so that is square root property. And the reason why we need to have the square root property down is because when we go to complete the square, we need to use the square root property. So here are your steps for completing the square. Step one, be sure the squared term has a coefficient of one. So your term that has a degree of two, so it has an exponent of two, your squared term, you need to make sure that it has a coefficient of one. If it doesn't, then you need to divide out whatever that coefficient is so that you make it become one. Number two, write the equation so that the terms with variables are on one side and the constant is on the other. Number three, square half the coefficient for the first degree term. And then you're gonna add a, the square to each side. Five. Factor the perfect square trinomial, because that's ultimately what we're trying to do, is create a perfect square trinomial. Hopefully you're pausing this video while you write these down. I'm just moving through it, assuming that you are. Um, so, and then we would complete the square as, so solve the equation using your square root property would be your step six. Okay, so let's put this into practice. So here we have x squared plus 8x plus 10. Ultimately, if we could factor this equation, we would factor it because we know how to solve for factoring. But factors of 10 are 1 and 10 and 2 and 5, and those don't add up to 8. So this equation is not factorable. So I can't factor it. So I need to come up with another way to solve it. So I can solve it by completing the square. So how do we complete the square? Well, I need to make sure my leading coefficient is 1. It is. So that's good. I don't have to divide it out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move my constant term, which is the 10, to the other side, which would make it become a negative 10. And I purposely left the blank there on purpose. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a perfect square trinomial over on the left-hand side. Because the addition property of, an equ of equality says that I can add one number to one side and the same number to the other side, and it keeps things balanced, right? It doesn't really change anything. Um, and keeps it equivalent. So I need to figure out what smart number I can add to both sides so that I create this perfect square trinomial over here. Okay, so let's think about what that needs to be. So perfect square trinomials. Remember if we had like x plus y squared, that would be equal to x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, right? So I need to get something where I already know what my x squared is. That's 1. So I already know that I need to have an x times an x, right? Because that would get me x times x would get me my x squared. But then I need to figure out what this number is going to need to be to end up getting an 8x there, right? That's going to be the same. So this is the trick. Here's your trick. What you're going to do is you're going to take your middle term. Take your middle term, which in this case is b, and you're going to divide it by 2. So right now my b is 8. I'm going to divide it by 2, which is 4. And then I'm going to square whatever that quotient is. So I'm going to square it. So that gets me 16. So I'm going to now add 16 to both sides, which is okay because the addition property of equality tells me I can do that because I could easily just cancel those out and get back to where I started, right? So now, how would I factor this trinomial that I now have? Factors of 16 that get you to 8. Well, isn't that 4 and 4? Doesn't that go to x plus 4, x plus 4, which is x plus 4 squared, which is ultimately where I want it to get to, right? So this will always, this number, this will always b your b divided by 2 always 
So when we start getting fractions, kind of keep that in the back of your head. Okay, so I factored the left side because I made it into a perfect square trinomial, which is factorable. On the right-hand side, negative 10 plus 16 is 6. Now I have an equation, x plus 4 squared equals 6. That looks just like what we did in our last square root property problem. So I can square root, square root. That gets me x plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 6. Subtracting your 4 over gets you negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 6. And then just write it with the subtraction first. So negative 4 minus root 6, negative 4 plus root 6. I know that seems like a very unnecessary extra step, but you are in advanced algebra, so you should be advancing the way that you present your answers. Okay, so let's go ahead and have you try this one on your own. Go ahead and pause. I'm going to assume you paused. Welcome back. Let's see if you did it right. So I have my leading coefficient is already 1. So all I had to do was move the 10 over. Then I'm going to take my b, which is negative 2, divide it by 2, which is negative 1. And then we're going to square that, which is positive 1. So we're going to add a 1 to both sides. You must add that 1 to both sides. This will factor to x minus 1, because remember, this is just your b divided by 2, which was negative 1, is equal to 11. Oops, I forgot my squared. So x minus 1 squared equals 11. Now I can square root both sides, and we get x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root 11. Adding your 1 over, 1 plus or minus the square root 11. 1 minus square root of 11, 1 plus the square root of 11 would be your two solutions. Okay, let's do another one. x squared plus 5x minus 1. Now this one's not going to be quite as nice because notice my b is not an even number like it was in the last two examples. My leading coefficient is still 1, so that's nice. So I don't need to divide anything out. So I have x squared plus 5x, leave a blank, is equal to 1. So now I'm going to take my b, divide it by 2, and square it. So that becomes 25 over 4. So I'm going to add 25 fourths to both sides. Now I have to deal with fractions, but that's okay because remember the trick, this is just going to be, this will ch keep the same sign. So if that's a plus, that's going to stay a plus. And this, remember, is just your b divided by 2. So what was my b divided by 2? It was 5 halves. So I don't even have to like really, really think about factoring it because I know what the trick is. Over here on the right-hand side, I do have to add 1, which 1 is 4 over 4, plus 25 over 4, which would get you 29 over 4. Okay, do your best to keep everything in fraction and improper fractions. So now I can square root both sides. So now I get x plus 5 halves is equal to plus or minus the square root of 29 over the square root of 4. I'm going to split that right away. Why? Well, my denominator is a perfect square. That's nice. So x plus 5 halves is equal to plus or minus root 29 over 2. And now I just need to move that 5 halves over. So x equals negative 5 halves plus or minus square root 29 over 2. So writing it in fancy set notation gets me negative 5 halves minus root 29 over 2. And negative 5 halves plus root 29 over 2 would be your final answer. Okay, so not too terrible. The fractions are not going to make it too terrible. And plus, you guys have a calculator that does fraction works for you. So if you don't even like feel like doing that by hand, I'll let your calculator do it. Math frack it. Okay, so now we have a leading coefficient that's not 1 anymore. Right now, my leading coefficient is 2. We have 2x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. So before I can do anything, I need to divide every single term by 2. So now I get x squared minus 2x minus 5 halves is equal to 0. Okay, so now I can do exactly what we did before. So x squared minus 2x, leave a blank, is equal to move that negative 5 halves over, makes it become a positive 5 halves. Now make a perfect square trinomial. So my b is negative 2 divided by 2, squaring that, negative 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to add a 1 to both sides. 
my left side factors to x carry down this sign, so minus my b divided by 2, which was 1 squared, is equal to 5 halves plus 1 is the same as 5 halves plus 2 halves, so 7 halves. So now when I square both sides, I get x, is that real? Okay, I'm going to move that 1 over right away. 1, positive 1, plus or minus root 7 over root 2. Well, I need to rationalize that. can't have a radical in my denominator, right? So I'm going to multiply by a square root of 2 top and bottom. So now I have 1 plus or minus the square root of 14 over 2. And I can just leave it like that. That's simplified. So we have 1 minus root 14 over 2. 1 plus root 14 over 2. Um, some textbooks may have you turn this into one fraction. I wouldn't do that. I would just leave it like that. Like if you made it into one fraction and made a common denominator, then it would be 2 plus root 14 all over 2. I feel like that's just going one step behind because it's not simplified out all the way. Oops, I erased too much. Let's get rid of that. There we go. All right. So now let's get into ones that have non-real complex solutions. So we're just going to have i's, which is not a big deal. So here we have x squared equals negative 15. So when I square root both sides, I get x is equal to plus or minus, pop your i out, square root of 15. Can I simplify the square root of 15? Nope, because that's just 5 and 3, so no perfect square. So I get negative i root 15, positive i root 15 as my two answers. So nothing too crazy, it's just now you have negatives, so you're going to have an i. Here we have the quantity x plus 2 squared equals negative 16, so square root, square root. x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of a negative 16, which is a perfect square, so that's 4 because I had a negative i. So we have x plus 2 equals plus or minus 4i. Move that 2 over, so negative 2 plus or minus 4i. Make your answer fancy, negative 2 minus 4i, negative 2 plus 4i would be your final answer. Let's do a complete the square. So again, this is not factorable, right? There are no factors of 7 that add up to 2. So my leading coefficient is 1, so that's good. 2 divided by 2 squared is going to be 1. This factors to x plus 1 squared is equal to negative 6. Square rooting, x plus 1 equals plus or minus square root negative 6. Moving your 1 over is negative 1. Popping out an i gets you i root 6. So negative 1 minus i root 6, negative 1 plus i root 6. Make it fancy. All right, and that concludes your notes. Bye.